Hey, everybody. Welcome back. It is another episode rounding out almost 2023 here. Episode of DadCast. I'm your host, JP, along with the other host, that guy over there, Nick Martin. How you doing, bud? Now, Dude, I'm a lot. What? Now, that what? question is loaded because you are fresh out eight days ago of surgery on the neck. We've been talking about yeah. it forever. It finally happened. How are you? Finally. I'm good. So blood pressure is good. I feel like 60% better than I did before the surgery. Um, still have some pain, but I don't have the headaches like I had before, and I'm probably not going to pass out. So we've got good going news. But the most <laughs> important question everyone wants to know is, did it cure the ED problem you were talking about? No, no, that's still that's still a no? problem. All right, we'll discuss that yeah. later. Anyway, thank God for blue shoes, though. <laughs> <laughs> that sponsorship ended, man. So you're welcome, blue shoe. All right, oh, yeah. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> to, today on the show, man, we are excited. We are stoked. We have a very awesome and talented guest, uh, probably best known for being the bassist in the band Blue October. Welcome to the show, Mr. Matt Noveski. How are you, bud? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Can't complain. Thank you guys for having me. You're very welcome, man. We appreciate you coming on. And and you could complain, but I've gone old enough now to know that what's the point? What's the point, man? It right? doesn't, doesn't do anybody any good. It Nobody doesn't. Else wants to hear it. It so. doesn't. And I've been yeah. telling my kids this for like as long as they've been old and, you know, they just still don't get it. They still complain quite a lot, which begs to question the most important question, the one that kicks off this show. It is the rite of passage here on DadCast, and I'm going to let Nick have it today. Matt, do you have kids? Are you a dad? I do. I am a dad. I, I am a father of three. I actually, I have a 15 year old girl, uh, Avery, and then I have an 11 year old son named Liam, and I have a seven year old son named Grayson. You have a 15 year old does, daughter does have an Avery? named Avery. I a, and I have a yeah. Liam. <laughs> That's so crazy. My daughter is Avery. Wow. His son is Liam. What? We are yeah. cosmically that's connected, crazy. Matt Noveski, so, and that's the show. The, so uh, I've got, <laughs> let me see, there's, there's Liam right, right there. Okay. And then I've got Avery, Avery right here. Sweet. Yeah. So we just need somebody with a Grayson and we can round it all out. Oh, that's awesome. Man, that's right? What a weird coincidence. No crap. You should be wearing a yellow yeah. shirt. You weren't kidding. You should go change that. I, you know? I know you guys, you didn't tell me this. <laughs> now, let me I ask you this. Me. If <laughs> now I'm going to, I'm going to literally lose my ever loving mind. If the answer to this question is the same as mine. What is the middle name of Avery? Grace. Okay. Whoo. Almost, but not. <laughs> Mine's Avery Allison. So there we go. If it was, you know, oh, if you nice. said it's Avery Allison of Esky, I was just like, you know what? We're done. We're out of here. This is cool. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, end of the story. Yeah. So I, I yeah, no, that's good. Avery Allison. That's got a ring to it. Right. Avery that Allison famous Pierce. That, that's what we were hoping for. Ooh. But fun story. Yeah. Uh, mom was all hopped up on drugs in the hospital right after she gave birth because she actually went in immediately after birth to have her tubes tied. Um, they just like a two for one special at the hospital and uh yeah. <laughs> she uh came back in and that's when the uh the nurse came in with all the paperwork uh for the naming mm. and, and and responsibility and all that stuff and yeah. i look over at my lady and i say i'm gonna name her avery allison warrior princess pierce are you cool with that and she's just <laughs> she had no clue and and i'm like you know what i so want to do this i really want to do this yeah. but i think i'm gonna get in a lot of trouble once she comes too so it was just Avery oh, yeah. Allison, and we let it go. And I told her the story a week later, and guess what? Why didn't you do it, she says. Oh, yeah. no. You should have just you should have taken yep. the plunge. I should have went it. with the gut, man. You wanna, yeah. 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 Warrior you princess. That would have been amazing. But anywho, so fit, how yeah. old were the kids? I got so excited when you said her name <laughs> that I just, I just I, like I said, I, I didn't even hear you. Yeah, a yeah, girl? that's crazy. So, no, she, so she, uh, my oldest, is fifteen, and then I have an eleven-year-old and a seven-year-old. All right, and and the eleven-year-old, so, that's the boy. Yeah. So I have two boys. Two yeah, boys my eleven-year-old Liam, and then the up, and then my youngest is a boy as well. Gotcha. So, uh, never a dull 15, moment. 11, so you're seven. going through the the teenage girl years that JP and I oh. are in the midst of. JP is actually on the other side, apparently. Yeah, do it quite good well. for you. I'm I'm so close to the other side. Do I, you? I can feel it. Do you have, I mean, is your oldest daughter, is it full time? Do you live with her when you're at home? So no, her, their, their mom and I actually split up a couple of years ago, okay. but I, but I have them a lot. So, so we kind of have a unique situation because I'm on the road a lot. You right. Know? So I would say I'm on the road probably five months out of the year. 
So we have a really cool relationship though. And, uh, I never have any issue as far as any of that goes. So when I go home, it's like, you know, instead of just, Hey, here's what we have planned out. It's like, if I'm like, Hey, I, I've got two weeks off and I just take the kids. She's like, absolutely. So I get the kids a lot, Nice. but it's just me and them a lot. So the last couple of years, it's just been me and my kids. In fact, we've even done some, you know, cross country road trips, just me and the kids. And so I lean on the oldest a lot, you know, she's 15, but I lean on her to help quite a bit. And she's, she's an awesome helper, but man, you're not kidding about the female teenage year. <laughs> oh my God. Have you, so it, it's insane. Have you encountered the, I'm not going to say the word hate, but the disliking of dad for no apparent reason. Oh yeah. It's, yeah, man. And I, I was always the cool dad, right? too, you know, and there's like moments where I'm like, wait a minute. I thought I was the cool, like, am I not the cool dad? No, you, no, you are going on. Matt, I'm going to guarantee yeah. it. Look at you. You've tattooed rock star dad. Okay. <laughs> like legitimately. <laughs> All right. I do not think they come cooler than you as a dad. So don't, 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 don't ever, that. don't you. ever worry about that app. But so, and there's no rhyme or reason, yeah. there's no explanation for it. So it's, it's weird how it goes from, they're just like, dad, let's hang out and watch a movie. Let's, you're my best friend to all of a sudden, like overnight, you're wrong. I'm going to go hang out with mom. I'm peace out. Yeah. F you. Yep. What, what is happening? Doors, door is closed. Door, you know, don't bother closed. me. I'm in yeah. my room. Yeah, exactly. Man. But it's, yeah. it's, it's crazy. And it's, and it's like from it's three, it's about three and a half years of maybe they call you, text you. And then it hopefully according That's, to JP, it gets better. It does. I, I, I am literally, yeah. I think in the last episode, we talked about it. Uh, my oldest is going to be crap. Is she going to be 19 or 20? <laughs> anyway, in like a two weeks, she's either going to be 19 or 20. I think it's no, she's an adult. Yeah. She's going to be 19. Um, and I was in speaking with lots of other guests We've heard it can be true anywhere from 14 to 21, 22, and then they start coming back down and loving you again yeah. and calling. And uh, I'm feeling it. I got it a little bit early. She it was a few weeks ago. She called up and she just out of nowhere was, I appreciate you. You were amazing. And, you know, I'm sorry. I was such a complete and utter chaotic mess for a couple of years there. And, and I was just yeah. like, holy crap. Wow. Recognition. It was really cool. So it's coming, man. You're, you're at the beginning. I look forward to you're it. You're at the beginning. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. as long as that relationship was solid and grounded, you know, from baby yeah. to the point of turn, you, you got, you're good to go. You know, the kids, they got to find themselves. They got to do their thing. We were that age, man. Right. It's hard to look yeah. back now. Oh, oh yeah. Man, I remember, I remember apologizing to my parents, you know, it was like, Hey, you remember when I was 13 for the whole year? I'm just, I'm sorry for <laughs> right? all of that. Like I was a total asshole the whole time, you know, and I don't even know why, you know, but yeah, no, I, I look forward to that. And I, and, and deep down inside, I really do have an awesome relationship with my daughter. We always have, we've always been like, you know, best friends. So how is it in your pers perspective or has it been um, different raising a girl versus the boys? Man, Do you treat them differently? Me, well, it's I kind of have to, and, mm -hmm. and the thing is, is I don't I don't treat them differently, like in a you know, like in a diplomatic sense. You know what I mean? Like I don't like give any of them like special treatment or anything like that. But all of my kids are so different from one to the next. Uh, Avery is my she's a rebel. You know what I mean? She's Check. like if you yep. tell her not to do something, she's gonna do it. And then uh, my middle child actually has special needs. Um, and he's like my, oh my God, he's just, he, just pure love. You know what I mean? Like he always wants to snuggle. He always just like, he's my buddy. Right. And then my youngest is like my little wizard, creative genius. Like he's just <laughs> always building things. And I wasn't like that as a kid at all. You know, I, was, I didn't know how things worked. I didn't, I didn't care, but he's very, very literal and kind of, mechanical and so to me like i have to approach all of them differently because they're all just so they're nothing alike you know they're all so different from yeah. even down to what they eat you know it's like and as a single dad i'm like okay it's dinner time here come three dinners uh, yeah you know it's god for doordash <laughs> these like, days right <laughs> oh god or pizza pizza is like right. the one thing i'm like it's pizza night we're good <laughs> you know so uh, yeah so take us back about 15 and a half 16 years ago it was a fateful day in the life of Matt Noveski, yes. and you were informed somehow, some way, that you were in fact about to become a father. Can you recall that day and the emotions? I, yeah, I can tell you exactly what happened. Uh, I was actually asleep, and I got yelled. At. I I was awoken by a 
a scream from the bathroom. <laughs> and it was, hey, wake up. I'm pregnant. <laughs> and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> you know, like, how did you inch in? It was crazy because she actually just had, she just had an intuition. She just had a feeling. And she got up and went, and I was still asleep. It was right. like 6.30 or 7 in the morning or something. And she went and took a test and she was positive. And it was, but it was, believe me, as soon as she said that, and, we, and I woke up and cleared the sleep out of my eyes, yeah. it was pure joy. You know, it was like, this is, this is incredible. So that's one thing I will say is, you know, none of my kids were, were uh, and not that there's anything wrong with it, but none of them were mistakes. They were, we, we wanted to have all of them. Right. For sure. That's, you know, good, so good. that was, like, we were, we were beyond stoked and like, you know, it's your first kid. It's like just nerves and emotion and you just felt like every single emotion you could pro- possibly have, you have, you know, and, th- and then the only thing, you know, not to like jump ahead or anything, but the only thing that I can really place above that feeling as far as being truly overwhelmed is the day she was born. Yes. You know, that. Your first kid, you know, it's like, yeah, I, we did all the, the cl- we did the classes and, you know, all the like yeah. the Lamas and all that and the breathing and everything. And I just remember the first thing that went through my head after my daughter was born, after I just saw her and she was so beautiful was why on earth did we do all of that? Because none of that actually prepares you for that. Oh, moment, no. you know? like, <laughs> like the, the class should just be, hey, just get ready because you're never going to experience anything like this again. You know, you're going to be completely overcome with emotion. You're not going to know what to do, you know, and that's exactly what it was. I was just like, wow. So how just tears were you unreal? Were you in the room? Did you help deliver? Was it over the shoulder? Oh, yeah. How'd that go for you? Was it smooth? No, I helped. Yeah. Yeah. And it was it was smooth. Well, she actually uh, no, it was not smooth with Avery. She um, there was like a 30 minute period of time there. where It was really scary because her heart rate was dropping and it turned out it had something to do with the cord getting wrapped around yeah. her and but they moved her around and she was fine and our doctor was absolutely awesome uh uh he delivered our, our first two um and we were like pretty close with him you know he's such a good that makes such a big difference yeah, you yeah. Know, like actually trusting your doctor and everything but yeah i helped i helped with all three of them and in you know i i to me it was a beautiful experience i loved being a part of it you know i know a lot of people that are like no, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's scary, you know, but I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Good. That's kudos to you, man. Cause yeah. I, I can't understand Thank you. any father who would, and I think Nick, you said you were one of them. You're, you're like, Nope, I'm good. I do not need to see any of that. Yeah, I, no. I, I, whether I couldn't, I couldn't cut the cord, whether I, yeah, no. pansy anyway, whether I wanted <laughs> to or not, I felt when am I ever going to get this opportunity again? B, this right. is my yeah. right, and as a father, th- this I this I have to do this. I got to step up to the plate. I, you know what I mean. I, this woman yeah. carried and 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 made this in nine months of just uncomfortable, and you know I got to do my part as yeah. little as it may be, you yeah. know, to help out. And it was amazing on on Avery. As a matter of fact, my Avery, she was yeah. A, yeah. a a water birth. So I actually, for lack of a better way to put it caught her in the water right and i got to hold her underneath while she was still as far as she knew in utero and i carried her out of the water and then mom rolled around put her on the shoulder and they wiped it out and then boom that's when the first cries came and she looked like a little purple asian kid uh but a little (laughs) yeah that's they all do Uh yeah Everybody, my yeah, my yeah. take on the whole thing is I'm paying doctors tens of thousands of dollars to handle all the gross stuff. Handle yeah. it. <laughs> just, just handle it. <laughs> I'll handle the cute. I, I get, get it. Yeah. You, get all, you get them all yeah. cleaned up, hand it to me, wrapped up in a blanket with the diaper on. I don't want to get peed or pooped on. <laughs> now that comes later. Yeah. Yeah. That comes later. Oh, and yeah. it has. Yeah. Like <laughs> so much. So Avery being 15 <laughs> yeah. years old, when is she 16? Give or take. I don't need an exact date. Uh, or actually February 1st. Okay. So it is coming up soon. Two one. Um, it's kind of driving. Has she, (laughs) has she used the dad as a rock star card yet to like influence friends, maybe get free tickets, say dad, I want to go to the show. She's actually, she's actually, I've always tell her, I'm like, Avery, if it's, 
if it's you, if it's, it's, well, of course if it's you, but if it's your teachers, if it's your friends, it's your friend's family, don't be shy about it. But she's always like very apologetic almost, you know, it's like she actually, we have a show coming up and she's like, dad, it's my friend. And, and, you know, and his parents are really big fans. I hate to ask. And I'm like, when are you, when is this going to sink in? Like right. <laughs> I'm in the band. It's okay. You know, <laughs> like we're, we're good, you know, you don't have to feel bad. So she's really like, I, I think she's just, that's kind of her nature. You know, she's very, she's just a really empathetic, like kind of cautious, you know, person in general. So, um, but I will say like, I, one thing that I love about her is she has great taste in music. Yeah, so I have actually discovered a lot of music through her, which is crazy, you know, like having a kid and your kid introducing you to music. And then also like being in the car with her, because there was like years ago, you know, where it was Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. And I'm like, okay, all right. (laughs) That's what I'm going Uh, through right now, by the way. Oh boy. And you know what? That's cool. But, uh, my kid will get in the car and I'll be taking her to school. And it's like Nirvana in utero or death tones, you know? And I'm like, man, what? My kid's cool as hell. Like what, what, this is awesome. I love this. So she, um, she loves coming to shows. She loves going to see concerts. She just went to Alana, actually her and our singer, Justin's daughter are friends. And they just went to Alana Del Rey in concert together. So, um, music's a big part of her life, you know, but, but again, yeah, with us in particular, I think she is kind of like, she doesn't want to overdo it or anything. Yeah. 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 You know? Didn't want to abuse think, the privilege. Yeah, but I think also in, in her mind, like her friends are all super cool and they like to come over to my house and hang out. She's always got, when she's with me, she's always got like four or five friends coming over, staying and hanging out and everything. But I think in their eyes, I'm the cool dad. I just wish it was in her eyes. <laughs> Don't, it's coming, you know, man. I'm it's like, coming. your friends all think I'm cool. Come on. <laughs> it's coming. Don't you worry, man. Yeah. I, it, it's yeah. a JP guarantee. I promise you. And then. All right. I'm going to hold you to it. Wait till, you know, Matt becomes a granddad. I'm not there yet. Neither oh, is Nick. I can't wait for that. I, right? I, yeah. I, I just. That's going to be the best. You and I were cut from the same cloth yeah. as far as age is concerned. Yeah, I did the whole Wikipedia thing. Yeah. I think you were a junior when I was a senior. I'm going to be 49 this year, next month. Uh, gotcha. So you skewed just like me a little bit on the older side when you became a dad for the first time. Right? Typically. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, I don't know where the hell I was going with that, Nick. I, I had a valid good point. Oh, the no granddad idea. thing. I, but that's <laughs> yeah. what it's like. I don't want to press it. Oh, by the way, my oldest, if you're doing math, is my stepdaughter. But she's been there since I was three. So my daughter, period. Gotcha. We, we don't call that. Um, but it, it could happen at any point in time now. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah. and it's like, I kind of want it to happen. But at the same time, it's like, no. Right. And it's very yeah. conflicting yeah. for me. But I know... That's going to be the coolest thing ever, man. Being, being, I can oh, it's give, going to be amazing. give them back. The yeah, the you, don't ha- you don't have to. It, it's kind of like, you know, what Nick was saying earlier. It's like, you don't have to do all the dirty work, you know? It's like, you can yeah. just do the fun stuff, <laughs> you know? And I, I, I have a big family. I've got uh, six sisters and a brother. And so there's tons of nieces and nephews. And that's one thing is being, you know, one of the youngest in my family. I, before I had kids, I had nieces and nephews and I got to be, like kind of the fun uncle when they were little, you know, and I was like, this is awesome. I get, I can do fun stuff with them and I can, you know, kind of be somebody they can talk to and open up to and relate to. And then I can just hand them right back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Go about my day. You know, <laughs> that to me is kind of the same thing with being a grandparent, right? Is you get to like yep. stuff their pockets full of candy and send them on their way. Exactly. You know, so what could go wrong? Oh, yeah. Dude, the crazy thing for me is I was done, man. My youngest, when I got together with my wife was what she was, I was you know, 16. So he was like nine. So we were like pretty much done. She didn't have any kids. She wanted yeah. to. So I got unfixed. Unfixed. Now have, yeah. Now I have a three year old and a 10 month old. So I'm like jumping wow. back to the whole doing the it all again. And oh, you're in the thick of it, man. <laughs> oh, dude. It's, it's and it's a whole different ballgame this time. Like I'm old. I'm tired. Yeah. Like, what right. is it? These yeah. kids are like just yeah. crazy too. Like my, my daughter, my 10 month old yesterday, we're sitting on the couch. So I can't do a whole lot right now, but somehow I thought she was sleeping kind of, and somehow she like squirmed out. We have this huge, like love sack thing next to the couch. And, and so she like, yeah. fell with that. And I'm like, okay, cool. She's good. So as she's on that, she starts bouncing, right? She bounces behind the couch and poor kids upside down, legs flailing around. She has a huge <laughs> knot on her head now. And I'm like, total dad. Fit. That's kid. 
The kids are no kids are resilient, man. That's, add that that's what one, they do. Add that know? one to the list, Nick. I know it's still not as bad <laughs> as leaving my my other one of my kids in a shopping cart at Walmart. So I had oh three, yes. So my middle my middle age on kids, top of the cart. All, no, no. Within the, they're all within the same age group, right? Like within a year of each other. Yeah. Pretty much. So we're, I'm out shopping, and I have all three of them. And the newborn, he's he was probably three months old at the time. I get two of them in the car, load the groceries in the car, forget he's in his car seat in the cart, put the cart away, and I get back in the in the minivan. I'm leaving and some old ladies tap in the back of the car. Your kid's in the car. And I'm like, nah, he's in the, <laughs> oh shit. He is in the car. Oops. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Oh dude. It was, that's I great. So bad. But yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah. That's, that's stuck with you. At least right? I didn't get but, down you know, the road and like totally forget about him. <laughs> I mean, these things happen, you know, like, especially when you have several kids and they're really little and you're tired and yeah, you know, but what, what, what is it like? I've always kind of, I don't know a lot of, I don't have a lot of friends that have kids that are like super close together in age. Mine are all four years apart, which is the same age that my brother and I are apart. Right. And that kind of felt perfect to me to sort of spread them out that way. Cause they can all get along, you know, um, for the most part, but what, like when they're yeah. that close in age, do they fight more? Or are they more, are they closer yeah. or is it kind of both? Well, she's still a it's, it's an infant. So yeah. Well, my, my yeah. middle aged kids, it's, oh, it's right. very, it's, uh, it's definitely both. So I have two boys yeah. and my eighteen year old daughter. My eighteen year old daughter was very close with all of them, and now she's kind of she does her thing, and the boys hate each Got other. Got it. So my son's yeah. twenty. Okay. My other son is just turned sixteen. So that's like the biggest age gap between the three of them, and they just okay. Leave. They like they cannot stand. Uh, each other. It's it's hilarious. Yep. But you yeah. know, eventually, I'm sure they'll as they get older, they'll be best buds, and I hope yeah. so. Yeah, Mine, cause right. my son is 13 and Avery's 10 and boy, does she just rile that brother up of hers. It, I feel like it is her job in life, apparently to piss off my son and, and poor guy, he's a sensitive soul and he hasn't learned yet how to manage these feelings, I guess. And you know, the best advice I keep giving dude. is, is, dude, you understand she's trying to get a reaction out of you. And every time you give her a reaction, the bigger, the better, the more she's going to keep doing this. If you just ignore it, walk away, like doesn't even bother you. Hell, laugh it off. She's going to be like, yeah. what the hell? She's going to try to figure something else to piss you off. But that version of it yeah. is going to stop. And he just doesn't grasp it. He engages every single time and... They far it's, out the getting along that, it, is doesn't happen as often as the fighting. It's kind of blowing my mind because my my Avery uh, with my seven year old is they rile each other up so bad. I mean, where I have to separate them. Uh -huh. And I'm like, you're 15, he's seven, but I feel like she just knows how to push his buttons. And yeah. same thing, he's very emotional, and he kind of gets, you know like trips over himself emotionally sometimes, you yeah. know, he just can't handle it, you know, or he gets really upset and gets really angry and she'll do it anyway, just to piss him off, you know? And I'm like, Hey, you know, he's, you, you gotta, you gotta lay off a little bit, you know? So, but I also, I have an older sister and her and I are super close now. And when I was little, Oh, it was terrible. Like yeah. she threw a spoon at me one time, <laughs> like this giant, one of those huge spoons yep. and it hit me in the eye. And like, I mean, we did not get along when I was a kid at all. She claims it's because I was an a-hole, but I'm like, I think it was both of us. <laughs> um, but that's when I was at like Grayson's age, you know, I was like seven or eight. Or yeah, yeah. But now her and I are like best friends, you know, so I get along with my siblings so well now that we're all grown up. I never so had I that. I think I have that to look for. I'm 10 years difference between uh, the next youngest sibling. So I was probably a, you know, yeah. either the postman or milkman's kid. Uh, but Right, <laughs> you know, I didn't have that. I I was yeah. old enough, separated, where I'm I was kind of like an only child. Two of them were moved out, and yeah. I think I lived with my brother when I from like, you know, zero to eight years old until he moved out, and I don't remember much of that. So, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. So there's no sibling rivalry on my end for that. There you have it. That was like the story of my life, sibling rivalry. I was like, they all dyed my hair bright pink when I was a year old. And they just tortured me when I was a child. Are oh, you the youngest? That's all they did. Because they're all, all my sister. Yeah, they're all older than me. Well, I have one. It's kind of like the Brady Bunch. Like, I have all half. And then I have two that are half to the half. 
Gotcha. It's, it's, it's a big Catholic family, right? And my parents, I'm the only child between my two parents and they have kids from their previous marriages. So it's this big mixed family. Right. You could have filmed a sitcom. And if, honestly, if, in if my you house did the math and the science behind all of it, you might've found out you ended up being your own father. It's just weird. Yeah. You know, it's, but, it's, it's a little, it's, it's out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So I see the hat. On the road again, it seems fitting. We talked before we got on that you're waiting to yeah. check into a hotel. Um, you guys are in the middle of a tour right now. Let's talk a little bit about that. Where are you at right now? How's the tour going? Et cetera, et cetera. Man, I'm actually in Medford, Oregon. You are not. Is, like, yeah. Do you, do you have ties here? Have you been here before? <laughs> this place is amazing, man. It's beautiful. Mickey's it's kidding, like, right? I, I, as far as I know, Blue October is not in Medford, Oregon. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't fuck with us. No, I, we're off today. I'm in Medford. There's no show today. We're just off, but we are passing through today. We're staying. Turn your today. camera. You're, you're in the same town as us. No, Nick, <laughs> be quiet. We got We got to go with this. Turn your camera around right now. I want to see what you're looking at, if you can. So I'm at I'm at a hotel, and there's like right next to me. There, it looks like there's an RV park next to me. Blah 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 blah. But um, I don't even know what hotel I'm at. The Hilton or something. Yeah, but I'm in Medford, Oregon. That's Shut we your fuck. It's a beautiful. Okay, where are you guys playing That's... tomorrow? What is happening? This, I, is, this is. We I live about in Medford, Oregon. I told you, this I live in dude. Medford. What, what the hell? Matt, if we this knew is... this, we could have done this shit in person. <laughs> I know. I, I had no idea, man. Neither did, did, did I. I, I totally did thought I. you're joking with this. Did you see the look on my face? That's did you all see the yeah. look on my face? I'm not yeah. a sucker, all well, right? And I was about to get suckered. Are you Portland That's tomorrow? Funny, Eugene, are you going north or south? Portland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, we do Portland tomorrow. We do the uh, the Roseland, which we've played many, many, many times. Yeah, yeah. We always did the Crystal Ballroom or the Roseland. Is Land. the entire band but with you right this now? This is like, you know, everybody's spread out. Day off, you know, we, we basically, we're all on a bus, right? We're yeah. on a uh, 12 people, 12 bunks. It is a full bus. Um, and this like, is so baddie so basically right now. what we do this is, is so bad. I know it's crazy. Uh, okay, um, I, I got to be of meeting up with you guys <clears throat> at about four o'clock, five o'clock tonight, and just doing like a quick 10 minute vlog of hey, dad cast with Blue October in Medford, Oregon. That's it. Let I could check. I all I know is on days off, everybody splits up and goes their own separate ways, and then we reconvene right. because we leave at night. So, what we'll do is the bus travels overnight, right? So, we'll yeah. all meet back up at whatever time tonight to hit the road. But I don't think Portland's all that far from five hours. So. No, you guys are, you're five hours away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so we'll leave tonight, but it, basically we get in as soon as we can check in, check in, you shower, you do whatever. And then everybody kind of goes their own way and then we get back on the bus and head back out again. So, it, so Nick gets a little grandiose. Though. Nick gets a little grandiose with his ideas and I appreciate it, Nick. I do. <laughs> you know, I love you. <laughs> you but, have I you was thinking to. more along the lines of since you're here, when we're done, yeah. I just want to swing by wherever you're at and get a, just a, a picture of you and I together if Nick can make it. Um, so for the thumbnail for this Nick, podcast, that's all I was thinking. You know, I, actually, absolutely. I, have to, I have to go to Rogue River, which is 20 minutes away from JP as soon as we're done. So, yeah, I'm totally I'm, I'll be here all day, man. Are you I'll a, be I'll be hanging out all day. Since this yeah. is going to air long after you are gone from Medford, I can ask this question so the crazy fans don't yeah. come out. Um, are you at sure. the Hilton on the south end of town where there's like two hotels close? Do you remember? I can tell no, you. There's a don't raise the hand, Nick. I don't know how to this. Yeah, no, no, the button was <laughs> no, I don't know how to do the button. I forgot. Oh, okay. <laughs> that is nuts, dude. Matt, when you're like, I'm in a town, Medford, Oregon. I'm like, there's that. No, like, freaking this guy. This uh, guy uh, right uh, in. I, I, I can see why you'd think I'm kidding. Right? Because I don't oh, think I we've ever been It's literally my hometown. I've never been here before. So we are Morrow Road. Morrow Road, okay. It's the ha Hampton Inn. I think that's one and right yes, over right I can over say it out loud. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah. Room number. No, no, no. <laughs> If I would have known this and I would have checked your schedule, I would have offered you, I do, I'm a concert promoter. I would have set up maybe like an acoustic thing in Grants Pass, which is 20 minutes south or north of you guys. Oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah. I have got yeah. like Saving Able. I'm working on Adelita's Way right now to come in. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Hampton. It's it Nick. It's the one off Biddle. Uh, okay. 
So, it's so funny. You, you, know how, you know how far away you are from me right now? 1.6 miles. <laughs> That's so weird. That is the weirdest. Yeah, like, man. What a strange coincidence. It, it, it really and we happened is. to do this today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. While you're here, it. <sighs> yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you, we don't do a lot of off days in smaller like cities or smaller towns. Like we usually do an off day, you know, where we, first of all, you have to have bus parking, you know, which isn't easy, you know, so you have yeah. to get a hotel that that's not going to be a big conflict or a problem, but we're usually between, you know, wherever we're at, we're routed on tour. So we'll just stay an extra day where we are. We'll get into the next city a day earlier. Whatever that is, this is one of those rare days where it's like, Hey, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful spot day off, you know, the, the leaves are changing and the weather's awesome. Like this is a perfect day to go somewhere beautiful, like Medford, Oregon and spend the day, but it's all, I mean, it's honestly really rare. It really yeah, is. That's so, crazy, uh, man. How that's when's, too funny. What time yeah. do you guys leave tonight? Um, I have all my, and we have, I love apps, right? You can just look at an app and it tells you everything you need to know. Um, Dude, isn't this baddie, Nick? It's actually not. It's actually not listed. It's actually not listed on here. I would assume if if the Roseland is five hours, probably like midnight or something like that. Okay. Usually leave late. The driver will sleep all day. Essentially, he sleeps yeah. while we're doing shows and sound check and all that, and then he drives all night while we're all sleeping on the bus. So the rest of the guys right now are so, just off doing their thing. Who knows yeah, what? Everybody's out either you know at the mall or off eating or. You know, doing work or usually on off days, I have work to do. I have a studio back in Austin. Yes, so you do. I'm usually doing, doing a pre-production or, uh, you know, songwriting or just kind of catching up on, on my stack of emails, you know, whatever it is. So that's kind of yeah, a typical If you're really up and cool with getting a picture with us, I'll head down as soon as we're done. Absolutely, man. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. I'll be, I'll be right here. I'm not going far today. So that's kind of okay, cool. Right. And, and, you know, maybe a couple uh quick little quick videos. Hey, it's JP. And, you know, hey, check yeah. it out. And I'm Matt Noveski and I'm going to we'll be on some, Dadcast. Some little promo stuff. Yeah, we'll do some some liners, right? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Talking my language, yeah. man. So I've spent yeah. 20 years of my life working in radio. Um, and oh, my gosh, I'm going to have one recorded for the Rogue, too. And surprise, Brian, if you're cool with that. But anyway, that's entirely <laughs> neither here nor there. Um, and I know exactly what liners are. That's crazy. And we played yeah, yeah. Blue October well, is one of my he, ex-girlfriend's favorite bands. My ex-fiance, as a matter of fact, from to, oh, what, was cool. the, what was the yeah. big hit in like 2006? Probably hate me. Hate me. me. Yeah. Hate yeah. Me yeah. And, uh, 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 Into the ocean was another one that did really well. Yeah. yeah it was kind of our two definitely big hate me. And uh, yeah, now she hates me too. So it's, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, I, I'm still like I literally I'm I'm pretty structured and grounded and and pretty. But man, when you said that, I know, I, mean, I, like, I, I just um, what you know. The, it, the weird thing is, like, I've yeah. been trying to see you guys live too, and like, I swear I checked the tour schedule. I'm like, ah, oh, they're not going to be anywhere close, and or maybe I yeah. just put off because of surgery or whatever. Because I would have either come to Portland. You guys were probably at Sacramento last night, right? Well, the sh uh, no, we were in uh, Fresno last night. Fresno, okay. so. Yeah, but I, I tell you what, man, the show, the Portland show is tomorrow. If you want to go, let me know. Like, I'll, you guys are more than welcome to be my guests if you want to go to the show. I got you. Nick, how's your neck? My neck's good enough for a road trip. You want to go to Portland tomorrow? <laughs> you know what? Here, here's the deal. I'm going to do something unprecedented, un unprecedented, <laughs> unprecedented on this podcast as well. By the way, officially, Matt, off the rails, like I told you. Um, yeah <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> we did it it's fantastic i know i was like we were going real smooth there for a while um it's yeah. all up to my lady who by the way is a big fan and i'm gonna call her in here she may or may not come because she hates cameras but uh i apologize for what's about to happen jay i love you it. must this is real come life. here all right she's gonna come out and i'm gonna ask her because we have kids and unfortunately, our babysitter, Grandma, is down with COVID, Nick. Oh, um, so, that's, crazy. that's the worst. So we, I, had, I had COVID, too. I told you, <laughs> two weeks ago, I had COVID. Yeah, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not it's, sure. It's still hanging out. If this yeah. works, it might just be like me and one of my, like my son, or me and just the lady. Or yeah. It's got to be her, though. It's got it's to be her. But I would love to, man. Yeah, be a bit, we love the Roseland. I'm not a big fan of the city of Portland, but I, I love 
lots of the venues there. Yeah. It's very, yeah, yeah. I mean, we don't want to get political here, obviously, but it, it, it's, it's too much cancel culture type, et cetera, yeah. going on. And it's just, it's just too much sometimes. And, and that's like Portland and San Francisco are like, like the, I the spots. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that two absolutely beautiful locations, two uh -huh. of the like most, the prettiest places in the entire United States. But I don't like having to step over people shooting up to go to 7 Eleven. Ah, you know what I, I mean? Like, agree and that with you more. Is, it's just terrible, man. It's just absolutely terrible. And it's such a bummer. You know, yeah. it's just, I hate that because I, I, Back in the day, you know, coming to Portland was one of my favorite things on it. And I still love it. I do. I have friends, you know, in the area. And I love all the Pacific Northwest. It's my favorite part of the country. But, um, yeah, but I, I really like it. Hey, this town. So how big is Medford? Medford's like, what a this bus. Is, this it, is a it, cool spot. It's the biggest city south of, I think, us and Eugene. I think we're the third largest city okay. in Oregon. Third or fourth. Obviously, okay. Portland. Yeah. And you got Salem, Eugene, Bend. Medford, and then of course yeah. the little bitty bitty Ashland, which is uh, south of us, just across the California border, which is a uh, real cool, yeah, um, little artsy fartsy town. Um, but yeah, man, I I love it here too. Yeah. This is there's a certain time of year where you can ski, raft, hike, surf on the same day, yeah, and be you comfortable it with it. That's yeah, awesome. it, like it's yeah. you know among other things, rock climb. You know, you it's, name it's, it. It's such a great spot. I, I grew up in Traverse City, Michigan, which is, is very outdoorsy and pretty. And, you know, you have all the seasons and everything. That's one thing I really miss uh, living in Texas now living in Austin. I miss that about Traverse City. And, and you know, the air is very easy to breathe. And this reminds me a lot of that. But one of my favorite shows, we did the Google Dolls tour last summer. One of my favorite shows, I think it was in Bend, Oregon. But it was the outdoor, yep. this yeah. really cool outdoor uh, uh, amphitheater got the little man. tiny river right by the theater. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. it's so pretty, the, man. What a cool right spot. There. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I absolutely love that place. Yeah. My buddy actually owns um, uh, one of the, it's, I think it's the Domino Room over there where we do, okay. we do a yeah. bunch of shows over there too. And yeah. He's got like yeah. five food trucks now. And, but yeah, we, uh, you need to appear on camera. So do you know, what you got to do. The Deftones and Rise Against and Thrice. Yeah, fine. Four Come on. Ago when they came uh, out. Nice. Oh, that's student. cool. So yeah. Cool. You're going to want to come here. Yeah. Can I at least put a clothes on? Yes. He's coercive. She, she's he's like, can I at least put clothes on? I'm like, yes, you sure can. <laughs> Probably be a good idea. You <laughs> sure can. <laughs> you, you may want to. <laughs> oh, that's batty, man. Wow. Yeah. I just, just, yeah. I, I'm still just. <laughs> I'm in a town called That's, Medford, Oregon. You ever heard of it? All right. So where we're waiting. Have you guys heard the new, Blink, the new Blink album one more time? I have. Did you cry when you listened to the song I've, one more time? Because I did. <laughs> That's just you, Nick. I, I, okay. I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. And, and like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people feel this way. And I, I actually really like Alkaline Trio a lot. So I, I was always a big fan of Matt Skiba. Um, but to me, like, Blink is the three guys that are yes. doing it right now, you know? And I think Matt filled in admirably. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Like, I love him and his band. But when they announced that they were, the, the three of them were getting back together again and doing that, it almost just kind of felt like something was right with the world again, you know? Yeah. It's like, ah, oh, oh, it's like a big sigh of relief. Like, okay, and we're back, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. So, hi, okay. how are you? I, I, no, 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 <laughs> we, you need to be part of this. You need to, you need to hear this. Okay. okay, I'm going to turn that that way. All right, first of all, Matt, this is Jen. Hi, Jen. Hi. Matt, nice to meet you. So we were just, you know, doing our show here, minding our own business, having a great grand time, and uh, talking about the tour. And he, out of nowhere, is like, yeah, we got a day off. I'm in this town called Medford, Oregon. I'm sorry. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, <laughs> and I, I immediately was like, dude, this guy's totally jerking us around. Like, there's, n what? That never happened. And then we went and fanboyed, and we're like, oh, my God, can we go get a picture? No, 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 that that was you, Nick. That was, and you're like, was hey, me. can we Sorry. come to a video? <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Matt, they're playing in Portland tomorrow night, and he has uh, so awesomely invited us to go uh, uh, with, like, with his credentials. And I need to ask you, go make it happen. You if you want to. to. 
You, yes, but I didn't need to be on camera for that. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy my fruit. I'm sorry. You're here. Nice meeting you. Oh, this is beautiful. It's a beautiful it place. Yeah, you don't live Thanks, here. Jen. <laughs> So, hey, I think you just got, I think you got the thumbs up. Oh, we got the thumbs sounds, up, but like. there's a lot of moving parts. Uh, three yeah, of those moving I, parts have four legs. Um, <laughs> yeah. Two other moving parts have two legs and school. Actually, they don't have school Saturday, but we'd have to stay the night. Nah, we could drive back. Who knows? There's lots of moving parts. So. Oh, yeah, because that's, that's five. Like you said, it's a five. That's a trip. You know, yeah. that's not that's not necessarily close. So, no. Yeah. And, and what's funny is I well, it's not funny. I literally just finished a f over a 63 hour uh, period drove 28 hours Oof. yeah over the weekend from I, where to where so from here home to vegas and then back oh man <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, I took my son to uh, the raider game in las vegas on sunday night football which was four days ago so yeah the idea we of were driving, playing that night in vegas were you good <laughs> God, That's crazy. What yeah, the, the night of the Raiders game, the night of the Raiders yeah. game, we were playing the Brooklyn Bowl in Vegas that night. Yeah, oh, man. that was that's my favorite venue too. I absolutely love that place. It's fantastic. There's an answer to your one of your uh, fast fives, Nick. So you better come up with another one. Okay. <laughs> who are you oh, guys favorite on tour favorite with? venue? Or we're talking about touring. Who are you guys on tour with? Oh yeah. So well, we're headlining, um, which we usually do, like outside of the Google Goo Dolls tour and festival shows. We don't. I, I could go on and on about it, but just nobody wants to take us on the road. I don't know why. I don't know if they're they're, they're scared they're going to get their asses kicked on stage or what it is, but nobody wants to take us out with them. So uh, we just have, we headline, we do our own show and then we bring out bands and we usually bring out bands that like not, not necessarily um, like bands that we're looking for to like really help with tickets or anything like that. It's just bands that we like, you know, bands that we're like fans of that we just yeah. like their music and they're cool people and want to be around them. So we have a band out with us right now um, that toured with us in Europe in the spring. And uh, we really liked them a lot. They were, I think they just did a couple weeks with us and we just kind of fell in love with their music. And so when the U.S. tour came up, they said, hey, we'd love to do it. And so we jumped on that and they're out with us right now. But they're called Fears, V-E-E-R-S. And they're phenomenal, phenomenal. So if you can, if you do come to the show, definitely get there by eight so you can catch their set because you'll, You'll be impressed. Super Ooh. pro. Yeah. We'll just hop and on the bus with you, man. You're me, coming back down, right? Yeah. It's only 12 <laughs> people in 12 bunks. It's not crowded <laughs> at all. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah that's they're, they're the great. bucket yeah. list. Live the tour life for one night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Like, you, you know, pe pe <laughs> I did people have no idea how not glamorous it is. It is not fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's it's hard, fun. man. Yeah, I was working with this band out of Utah called American Generals, and they were like tapping yeah. the next My Chemical Romance. Like these guys were on fire, doing big things, had a record deal. We did a music video with them, had a small West Coast tour. So I went out on the bus with them, toured with them, and it was not fun. It was like, dude, this yeah. is cramped. This is this is like it's weird. Yeah. It's like you know the the parties on the bus. Like that was back when I drank and partied hard. Yeah. And, you party on a little bus with like 10 people. It's like, oh man, it's hot. It's sweaty. That's not as cool as it looks on MTV. <laughs> no. no, you get, you get yeah. to know each other real quick. <laughs> yeah, real quick. yeah, you know. exactly. And apparently you guys like each other. <laughs> All because, the smells. Uh, you've been going strong yes. now for yeah. pushing 20 years. You're absolutely right. But the, I think the thing with us is, you know, we're all about the same age in the band. We all have kids, all of our kids. We can relate to each other as fathers because we're all fathers, every one of us, you know? So, and that's a big part of it is our kids all growing up together. And I think awesome. that has kind of kept us, sort of glued us all together. And then also um, a couple of the guys in the band uh, have gone through recovery. And it it really happened at kind of a make or break point for us. I think that if, if, if uh, Justin had not chosen to go into recovery and get clean, we definitely would not. I would not be in Medford, Oregon today, like un <laughs> unless it was for completely different reasons. You he know, keep but, saying our um, hometown, man. It's just blowing my mind. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. um, so for for us, that's a big part of it. Though. It's like you know, we don't, you know, we don't party like crazy or anything. I mean, we, you know, our, our we have like and our crew is really tight too. Like we're all really good friends. We all get along really well. Um, and of course people can have a drink or go out or do whatever they want to do, and you know that's fine. But as far as the the vibe on the bus, it's we're here to, to put on an, a show, you know, people are paying money 
that they've earned hard earned money to come see us and getting up there hungover or not, you know, not giving hundred percent is not an option, not at our age, you know? So we want to get better and better every tour. We want to give a better show and that's not lip service. I'm, I'm dead serious. You know, we want to bring it, you know? So I think it's, it's almost, we're kind of an anomaly in that way because we're in our late forties and our crowds are actually growing, which isn't really supposed to happen, you know? So to me, it's like, you know, maybe more, more bands or more artists should, uh, stay positive, you know, and, and just like really kind of embrace the things that I feel like we do as a band. I think it's really, it's unique for sure. I'm lucky. Yes, you are, man. Uh, I've got a two parter question. Um, sure. 2020. How did you navigate that whole ordeal as a father? How'd that go for you guys? Well, (laughs) I will say that, um, as I mentioned, I got divorced. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Didn't know it was that year. All right. Okay. All right. Um, You know, but, but the truth is without like sounding corny, it was something that needed to happen and it wound up being the right thing for, for both of us and for everybody. And I feel like we're, we're friends. You know what I mean? And I don't think we, sometimes you have to do that. You have to separate to become friends, you know, and, and I'm, and I'm grateful for that. And I think that that just kind of, when you're on the road and then you're home for a little bit and you go back on the road, you sort of put band-aids on things instead yeah. of really facing them. And I think one of the hard things about COVID just to be real with you guys was you all of a sudden you're, it's like, I'm not going on the road. I'm not going anywhere. I'm here. I'm going to disrupt your plans. I'm going to officially, screw up your routine, yeah. you know? And, um, and I think that a lot of hard truths came about during that time. And that was one of them, but, but man, as far as like work goes, I'm really lucky that I have a recording studio. That's that saved my life, honestly. You know, um, if I hadn't had that, I don't know what I would have done, you know, cause obviously touring was not an option. Right. It was scary times, man. It was like, you go from just having 20 some years of the cycle to nope, that's yep. not happening. You're not going on the road. It's like, wait, what? Like, what am I, what am I going to do? What am I supposed to do? So I really dove headfirst into the studio and making records. Cause the one thing that artists could do during that time, as long as it was safe and you were following the protocol and everything is you can stay creative. And so the studio was actually doing really well during that time. And it was, it was, it was a really good time for us because a lot of people sort of, the people that are proactive sort of looked inward you know, and they went to the studio and they continued to make music and they knew that things were going to get back to normal, whatever that is, uh, at some point, you know, so I did a lot of that. I did a lot of mentoring. I worked with a lot of younger kids who are artists or want to learn how to songwrite, play music and sing, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, kind of got to spread my wings a little bit with that, which I love doing. I love working with kids. Um, and just dove, you know, head first into that and did that from what I thought was going to be a month, uh, yeah. <laughs> two weeks, a year and a half, two weeks or whatever, to slow yeah. the curve or whatever. Yeah. Right. That, that was honestly the hardest part about being in a band during COVID. It wasn't necessarily that everything got shut down. It was that for months and months and months, you kept planning tours and then they would get canceled yeah, only to, and then you'd plan another one. And then that would get, and it was like, you just didn't know. And then there were finally, I remember there was a day where it was like, we're going to stop this madness and just wait until right where we can actually do it, you know, cause this isn't happening. It's just, it's just, everybody's getting gray from this, you know? So to do the whole, we're going to wait until rough. Limp Biscuit plays somewhere and then we know we're good. Right. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, if, if they're doing it, it's gotta be safe. Right? By the way, you answered the <laughs> second part of that question within all that question. So I was going to ask, um, and gotcha. how, now how did you navigate, as a professional and, and your career and, and good stuff. Uh, All right, Nick, yeah. have you put together oh. a fast five? Yeah. All yeah. right. Let me explain. Fast five is a radio segment. I used to do five quick questions. Um, and I gave it to Nick, Nick, here we go. All right. First question. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Oh my gosh. If I could have a billboard, um, I would say play bass, not guitar. <laughs> All right. Man, there are so many guitar players in the world and nothing against it. Don't get me wrong. Our guitar player is phenomenal. He blows me away. And I'm a big fan of guitar playing. But man, I just don't think a lot of people real. A lot of people think that, oh, bass, it's like the worst guitarist in the band plays bass because that's what you do. No. Sometimes that happens. I'd but say bass, it's, 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 see, it's 
you get to play drums and guitar at the same time. Yes. That's the way I look. That's what I was going to say. It's as so if fun. not more important than the drums. Yeah. I, I was just really lucky. I had an uncle who played bass and it like, I just knew that it was awesome right off the bat. You know what I mean? So that's what I would say. Uh, no offense to guitar players out there, but <laughs> to the young kids, play bass, pick up a bass, try it. I nice. slap it the bass. Okay. Favorite, slap of the bass. <laughs> favorite food to cook for your kids. Ooh. Pizza. Didn't we cover this? Kind of did, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't really cook the pizza, though. I just kind of order the pizza for them. Um, actually, so my favorite thing to make for my kids is actually breakfast. That's one thing that they all love. I love making yep. a big, like, Sunday pre-football breakfast for my kids. I'll do biscuits, uh, the thick-cut pepper bacon, eggs, um, grits, you know, uh, a little bit of everything, man. But it's avocado toast and... I'll just mm. just put it all out there and my kids will just go nuts. So I love it. For me. All right. You've heard yeah. my parenting fails. What's yours? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I think I have like maybe not being present in the, in the, in the moment enough. You know, like I think that I, I have to like, I always say, hey, put your phone down, put your phone down. But then I catch myself doing it. Oh. You know, so I think there, there have been moments where I should have been more, uh, I guess in the moment and paying attention and not necessarily distracted by work because life can't be all work. And that's something that I got to find balance with. All right. We covered the favorite venue. What's your favorite band to tour with? Like Ooh. I would say co, co I would say co headline with man. I love stone temple pilots. Um, to this day, you know, I, I, they've had, we've toured with them and played with them. Sorry. When they had Scott and it was unreal. And then we were with one head Chester and it was unreal. And then we've done some show, a couple shows when they've had Jeff and it's also been unreal. So I, to me, um, I really love like the last few records they made the first record. I didn't really care for, but after that, I really started to get into them and they put on such a great show. And one of the things that really stuck with me was one of the first times we played with them. I got to, to talk to Robert DeLeo, the bass player. And he was like the nicest person I've ever met. He was just so genuine. I had this like hour long conversation with him that stuck with me for the rest of my life. And, nice. you know, kind of being a young kid and just looking up to somebody. So to me, like, I just, I thought there were such good people who put on such a great, like live, uh, such high energy show. I think they're a perfect fit, honestly. Sweet. Very cool. Um, that it? I don't, I don't have a fifth one. All right. I got a couple for you, man. Okay. Uh, you could play gotcha. a, You could play a show with any band or artist living or dead you have not already played with who's it going to be prince that's a good answer Ooh. i'm going to say prince and yeah. and yeah and 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 to me prince could get on every instrument and smoke everybody in his band and like it, it, even though they're all phenomenal he's just the ultimate showman i'm so bummed that i never got to see him in concert and i would have loved to play with him although it would have been, I would have wanted to play first. Play <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. No. So this might answer yeah. that next question, but uh, in your opinion, who is the greatest bass player alive or dead? Oof. I'm going to have to say James Jamerson, man. Like I, it, to me, it's like if you, it's Motown hit after Motown hit and the guy it's kind of a sad story, you know, because he never got the recognition that he should have not until years and years later, but Every the Temptations, Diana Ross, Jackson Five, like all these songs, they're all Jamerson and they're all his iconic bass lines that just carried those songs. And like I feel like everybody knows the Jamerson bass line, whether they whether they know it or not, whether they realize it or not, they're all humming it, you know. And I think mm -hmm. he like he knew how to drive a song in the right way, you know. So I'm I grew up on Motown. I'm a big fan. <clears throat> um but I also am a big Sting fan, actually. And I really like he's I like the way that he builds his melodies around his bass playing. I mean, I love the police back in the day, you know. Yeah. So I would say I would say Jamerson for you know somebody who's dead and then somebody who's still kicking it, I would say Sting. There you go. We'll give him a call, man. We'll get a get that show lined up. <laughs> Blue October Sting. I mean, why not? Let's do it. Right? Screw yeah. it. It's hey, like a Mike I'm, FM I, of I, concerts. I, I, I can commit right now. <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier the big breakfast on Sunday morning before football. You saw my eyes light up. Who's your favorite football team? Oh, dude, I am a Detroit Lions fan. Dude, I, I, I always thought, have been. I thought so. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think dude, it's, 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 it's finally happened. Coming from a Raider fan who has oh, just yeah. been dealt yeah. with hurt 
after hurt, after loss, after craziness. You got something good like going, man. Coach. I don't want to jinx it. I, I really, I like, I actually really like what is happening with you guys right now with Antonio Pierce. I think that was a good move. I think he's breathed some life into the, to the team, yes. which is awesome. Um, I'm actually really good friends with uh, Kendra Stabler, who's Kenny Stabler's daughter. She's Ooh. actually a good friend of mine. So we have the same birthday, funny enough, but, um, so I, I kind of have a soft spot for the Raiders, but man, I've been, I've been a, a, a Lions fan since I was a kid. And so it's just been misery and heartache forever and this year we are kicking ass and i'm enjoying it i i hope man i mean loving it my son jokingly because he's you know he's become a raider fan as well um which (laughs) is awesome i always give him the choice but if he's following in papa's footsteps that's fine by me he said a few weeks ago yeah dad it's gonna be the lions and the raiders in the super bowl and i says "Eh, no it's not it's it's really not (laughs) and this was you know my initial instinct gut thinking because i'm thinking of the lions and the raiders of old and there's a no way in hell but it it could happen Times are changing i think more yeah, so uh, the detroit happen. making it this year than the raiders mind you but i i have a i i'm gonna go ahead and make a prediction i'm gonna say lions make it to the nfc championship and, and lose, lose to either san francisco san francisco probably um, I don't think Philly is as good as everybody thinks they are. We'll, we'll find out Monday night. They've got some weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll eight, see. eight and one, man. They got, they got the, the whole rematch happening Monday night against the chiefs. Um, okay. Does this mean yeah. you're a Wolverine fan as well? College? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yes, how you I feel am. about uh, Mr. Good, Harbaugh and everything are going good, on right now? He's I, the thing with, I have mixed feelings about Harbaugh because I'm such a big Lions fan. I still like, I wanted Jim Schwartz to kick his ass during that game where he slapped him on the back and then he yeah, chased him yeah, down. Yes. I was like, what a dick. Like, go get him, beat him up, do something. So I've always kind of not liked Harbaugh. But then when he came to the Wolverines, I was like, okay, this is full circle. When I was a kid, he was the quarterback. I, my dad would take us to games. Yeah. And he was the quarterback for the team back then, you know? So I was like, okay, I guess I kind of have to like him again, you know? So, um, but honestly, at the end of the day, like, I think it's nonsense, man. I think suspending him is all just for show. Like what I could go on and on about it, but what the Wolverines did, every single team does exactly that. Yeah, they just it's got caught. an example. They just got caught. They got, they got caught, man. So whatever, do what you got to do. We'll win. We'll keep winning. We'll beat Ohio state. It's all good. Yeah. Nick, you look like you're about ready to say something you got. No, I'm just trying to get comfortable. That's all. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry dude. <laughs> well, we're getting close yeah, to say, the end of this year. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, rethinking that whole road trip thing tomorrow. <laughs> Matt, yeah, <laughs> Let, Matt, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna end this soon, but don't uh, go anywhere. Uh, once I, yeah, I'm gonna turn off recordings and all that stuff. Stick around. Yeah, um, you got it. Um, wow, man. <laughs> This has been an episode. It just blows my mind that you're. Yeah, saying, I know. It's I wish we had known, man. I, we could have set you up. The guest is like, I'm in Medford, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We probably, will that ever happen again? Who yeah, knows? Probably not, right? I mean, okay, no. let's let's go back, Nick, because Nick is the man behind the scenes when it comes to this podcast. He does all the scheduling and getting guests lined up for the most part, and I handle, uh, you yeah. know, the, the editing and, 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 you know, and he hates it when I say this, but the lack of a better way to put it on the talent. Um, yeah. <laughs> see, the face. I'm the voice. I'm the voice. If yeah, there's, the right. there's going to be a face between the two, I'd pick his. Um, but uh, so when did this, how did getting Matt on DadCast I go I, about? I hit you up on Instagram like a week ago or something. Yeah. 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 Just recently. Yeah. yeah. And you know, what's funny though, is, is usually, like I said, I'll have kind of a work day planned out. If it's an off day, I'll, I'll already have like the last off day I had, I had like six zooms all back to back. And it was just, it just wound up. This whole thing has been kind of weird because it just wound up being perfect. You're like, well, how about Thursday? And I'm like, I don't have a damn thing going on on Thursday. It's like the only day I really have nothing going. I was like, right. I'm wide oh, open. Like our so, last guest, we had Thomas Nicholas from American Pie on. And I had oh, been yeah, yeah, yeah. For two years just trying to get him to commit yeah. to the date. And finally, the stars aligned and it worked out and we had him on. But man, it usually takes yeah. about a month of back and forth of I've got this, I've got that, yeah. I've got this. And then it works out. But never this quick and yeah. never this perfect either. It's just so weird that. Yeah, that's yeah. nuts. Weird. <laughs> um, Two I'm, in, I, I'm in your backyard. <laughs> Literally, I can, yeah. 
You yeah. know, if, if, I'm like Uncle Rico. I could throw a football over them mountains and hit you in the. <laughs> not even kidding. Okay, oh, I can't man, throw a football that far, but it's, you know, for lack yeah. of a better way to put it, if I could show you Google, yeah. I, mean, I literally, I could call you and be like, time me. And yeah, it's so close. I'll be there in three minutes. Yeah, That's probably, funny. give or take. I'll be, there in, I'll be down there in 33 minutes once we <laughs> wrap this up. <laughs> um, uh, two questions. One, I need to ask you on the air so uh, you feel obligated because um, we're, we're getting close sure. to that time, Nick. We, uh, every year we do a Father's Day episode. Um, we try to get as many of our guests that we had on the previous year and we get on, we don't do it on father's day. Mind you, right? It's like recorded a week or two prior. Um, we do it on Christmas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, we get a bunch of really cool guests. We're talking, you know, movie stars, TV stars, musicians, athletes, whoever's can and willing. And we line up a date. We would love to have you on if that's something you're interested in. And, uh, Oh man, sign me up. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. It'd I'd be love good. To. It's like the Brady bunch. There's like 40 square squares on there cool and and it's yeah. funny because there's a bunch of people doing this wanting to talk and you have to raise your hand and, and it, it's complete on chaos and it's basically just wishing everyone a happy nice. father's day introducing yourself to some new cool people in the industry and uh leave it at that so cool love it committed and yeah. i always ask when we're on the air because you no one says no to something when they're you know <laughs> You, you got to do it. Yeah. They don't show up on the Father's Day podcast. And then they don't. Yeah. They're just, they're, <laughs> whoops, ghosted. Um, the yeah. final question I have for you, Mr. Novesky, yes, is sir. I like to think the most important question I ask on this podcast. So no pressure. <coughs> you can give one bit of advice to any father, new or about to be. What's it going to be? Hmm. Yeah, that, no pressure, right? That's not a good question. <laughs> um, so I've actually, um, I have spoken, I'm going to make this a little bit specific and I hope that that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but being the parent of a kid with special needs, I've actually spoken with some parents that were new parents. My son has Down syndrome and we didn't know that he had Down syndrome until he was born. And he's, I could go on and on about this, but to me, he has been, one of the absolute biggest blessings of my life. I mean, he's, I can't even begin to tell you how much he means to me. Um, and the kind of relationship that we have, the, di the dynamic that he and I have is really beautiful. It really is. So, but I've, I've had, have been fortunate enough to talk to some other parents that were new parents and also had children and did not know. Um, and it's through an organization in Austin, but I got to talk to a couple of parents and kind of almost coach and mentor uh, one father in particular who had a, a baby with Down syndrome and had just a lot of grief and a lot of, you know, he, he saw the, he had a lot of questions because he saw a lot of the challenges that were in front of him. And it really just kind of, it shocks you. It comes out of nowhere, you know what I mean? And it's your child and all you want to do is protect him. And you're just, all of a sudden you go from being really excited to really scared, you yeah. know? So, and, and, um, so I was really lucky to, to have a lot of conversations with him and talk back and forth. And it's been a while, but, but when we did, it was really beautiful. It was really cool. And I like to think that I was helpful, you know, but, um, you know, one of the things that I told him was, uh, you're going to have all kinds of challenges. You're going to have all kinds of things, um, that you weren't expecting that are going to, are going to trip you up and are going to scare you, but you are always going to be that kid's dad. You know what I mean? Like no matter what happens with relationships, your other kids, whatever, you're always going to be that kid's dad. And you've always got to be strong for that kid. No matter what, no matter what's going on with you, if you got to go in the other room and cry and let it out, or you got to be emotional, you do what you got to do. But when you've got to be strong for your son, just like I am for mine, you've always got to step up to the plate. You can't let your own stuff get in the way. You just can't. You don't have time for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when it's you and your son and you're in the moment, you've got to enjoy that moment. You've got to make it everything that could possibly be. And don't make excuses, man. Just don't, don't make excuses for yourself and don't make excuses for your kid. You know what I mean? Don't, Oh, well he can't do that. He, you know, he's not able to do that. You know, uh, kids, kids with special needs will really blow your mind because they can do a lot more than you think they can do if you just allow it to happen. You know? So that's what I would say. There you go. And I think, you know what, that advice you just gave that, that doesn't apply to just kids with special needs, man. That's, that's yeah. kind of a, yeah. that's there you go. 
anyone, everyone, uh, be yeah. there, be there constant. That's what I got out of that one. Yeah. Good be there stuff. Rough, for sure. He yeah. is, ah, oh, Matt Noveski, who's in Medford, Oregon right now. Basis for the bland, blue, the bland, the band, blue October. The bland. Yeah. <laughs> they're definitely I not, hope we're not bland. bland. They're not bland. <laughs> no. I could edit that out, but that's funny. We like our mistakes. You own no, your I like mistakes. It. I like we it. accept accountability yeah, here do. on Dadcast and as dads. That's yeah. the one of them thing. That's that's the biggest. Whew, that's the biggest lesson I'm trying to teach my son, man. Take accountability because if you don't start doing it oh, now, yeah. it's going to lead you down a path to where you're making excuses uh, the rest there of you your go. life. And you can make excuses all day long. I because right. I you know guilty. We all are, uh, but I hate them. Yeah. Accountability, yeah. man. Take accountability yeah. for your actions, good and bad. Um, again, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys. We're big fans. Uh, I hope the tour goes real well. I hope my lady has figured it out since we spoke so we could come hang out with yeah. you tomorrow night because that would be absolutely amazing. Uh, to everyone. You let me know. Absolutely, man. Stay on. Don't go anywhere. To everyone watching, you got you. worldwide listening, however you may be listening, thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you're on the YouTube watching this thing, uh, thanks for sticking through. Make sure you like it up, subscribe, do all the things. We appreciate you. And Nick, who's our brother podcast that you need to shout out right about now? The Rockstar Dad Show with Jared and Gary from Bowling for Soup. Boom. Make sure you check all that out. Um, once again, Matt, thank you very much. And we'll check everyone else out on the very next episode. Have a great rest of your whatever. See ya. Thank you, guys.